We saw your people they were counting birds. <laughs> they were counting birds. Why do they do that? Exactly. Because we believe that the migratory birds are sentinels of environmental parameters. They migrate long distances from, say, Greenland all the way to Ghana, and they pick up cues in the environment and changes in a habitat will impact on the bird population. Professor Ya Ntiamwa Beidu is the chair of the Center for African Wetlands. Earlier, I joined her team to experience how the bird counting is done at the Dainsu Basin. I learned the names of some birds I never knew existed, not to think of existing here in Ghana. Some of them are African skimmers, terns, spare-winged plovers, black-winged stilts, common sand piper, waders, among others. Seeing and hearing the birds chirp was simply surreal. Alfred Ali has counted birds for more than 30 years. I'm using this counter. This is a counter. Uh -huh. When I look through the telescope, then the telescope draw the bird near to me. And then I count them. Over the years, first we used to have a lot of widest tents here. But this time, their numbers have reduced. We don't know what is the problem. Dr. Jones Kwate is part of the team counting birds. He explains the importance of birds to fishermen. Just behind me, you can see these birds. These are known as black tents. And these are important um, for the fishes because they use them to identify hot spots of um, fishing activities. So when you find the birds there foraging, it means that you have some fishes in the water. So these are used, these are very, very important. They are the tanks, and we have different species of the tanks. But over the years, we've realized that the numbers of the tanks have gone down drastically. Um, and these, we've over the years also observed that some people actually do hunt the ten species. However exciting the bird viewing was for me, I was simply exhausted after four hours of walking. Tired this place, they are ungu. I'm tired. The team continued the counting while Ni offered to show me how a development in the Densu Basin is affecting the water beds. This is a settlement at the coast. Uh, so behind Pambros we have these settlements, we are man, uh, Glyphy and the others. So ideally these places are not supposed to be inhabited. But then we have some people who were here originally and then there have been other squatters or settlers that have moved in as well. So this is a whole community on its own. We are Boman is a slum built in water trapped between the Dinsu Delta and the sea. The developments are scattered and unplanned. All it takes is a little shower and the township is submerged. But more structures are still under construction. The roads are impassable. But Jonathan Tete has lived here for five years and tells us how they get by. <laughs> Not all human activities are a danger to the birds. Like these salt ponds, Dr. Jones explains. Wherever you have the salt ponds, it's like you have a collection of water. You could have some fishes in there and the birds feel that it's safer to forage in such areas. So these ones are okay. But the negative anthropogenic activities could be related to wood cutting or firewood collection. The most important one here is development for residential facilities. You know, a wetland is actually naturally like a sponge that helps to control flood. 
So whenever there is flood, it holds up the water and discharges it gradually into the sea. But the more you build closer to the wetland, reducing the flood plains, the areas where it's supposed to contain the water, then the very core area where you are supposed to have, um, let's say, the ecological activities is being affected. However, the negative ones are even more devastating, threatening Ghana's five coastal Ramsar sites. This trend, Professor Ntiamu Abedu argues, hasn't always been so. You have a place like Sakumo Lagoon, which was considered sacred by the people of Tema New Town. There is one species of heron, the black heron, that occurs in Sakumo. And because that species was protected by the people through their beliefs, it was a taboo to kill the black heron. She professed the following solutions to reverse the occurrence, least Ghana reneges on her obligations to the Ramsar and Bond conventions to which she is a signatory. We need to prevent people from building in the wetland. We need to prevent people from directing sewage from their homes into the wetland. That's what has happened to Sakumo Lagoon. If you go there now, it is thick mud, basically, rather than open lagoon water. And we need to empower the wildlife division to be able to manage the wetlands. They are the agency responsible for managing uh, the Ramsar sites in the country.